one of the most frequent questions I get is related to the stat that I talk about from time to time, which is I have traveled to 98 countries over 350 times. That 98 countries over, yeah, 98 countries over 350 times. And when I say traveling to a country, I mean, I've spent at least two weeks there of working, truly plugging in personal reasons, but it's got to be a solid two weeks. It can be five days here, five days there to make two weeks later, but it's always at least two weeks. The first question is, why would I travel to so many countries? Are you trying to see the entire world? And the answer to that is absolutely not. The reason why I travel is because when I was 15 years old, my father sent me to France. I traveled around the country in an old stick shift Range Rover with an exchange student family. Being from inner city Boston, it really opened my eyes to the fact that the world is a lot bigger than what I knew. I had great emotions and feelings during that trip, French wine, French food, French girls. It was just a beautiful, beautiful thing for an inner city Haitian kid to go through. And then the second thing that happened to me, I was 21 and I found Personal Finance for Dummies, a book, which led me to passive income, which led me to real estate, which led me to being able to control my time through passive income, et cetera. But that original trip to France made me realize that the world has so much to offer that I've just never stopped traveling since. It gets misunderstood in my conversations that, hey, one of the reasons you travel so much, Maurice, is because you are an entrepreneur and you have a certain amount of money and you have those resources to do that. And the truth of the, ma truth of the matter is actually, no, 70% of what I've done from a travel perspective, and when I say travel, I don't travel like a tourist. I mean, truly immersing yourself in culture and making friends and building family and what have you. But 70% of what I did was because I figured out the skill, the art form that is travel hacking. And that's what this particular episode is about. I have been asked about the travel hacking thing. I am not talking about credit card points and the best hotels and things of that nature. When I say travel hacking, I am talking about traveling in the most amount of comfort for the least amount of money and being able to leverage hacks, if you will, to make the world smaller. So if someone goes to Walmart to buy clothing for the weekend, I might get on a plane from D.C. and fly to Frankfurt, Germany to have dinner. And it's very normal for me. Sometimes I fly to uh, Izmir, Turkey to read a book and come back. Sometimes I go to Beirut, Lebanon. Sometimes I go down to Greece. Sometimes I just go up to Canada. Sometimes I go something local in the city. But this particular eight-minute conversation that I clipped out of another interview, I got asked that question and I thought it was the best instance that I answered it the way that I would want you guys to hear about it, which is travel hacking is a skill set that allows you to make the world smaller so you can experience the relationships and experiences. So you can have the relationships and experiences that make a fulfilling life. Travel hacking is such a beautiful tool for that. It's an art form. I spend a lot of time with my coaching students on it. So I hope you like this eight minute clip from an interview that I did not too long ago where I was asked the question about travel hacking, how I do it, why I do it. I didn't go into every single detail, but it'll certainly give you a sense of what happens. And with that in mind, if you do have any follow up questions, feel free to send me a note, maurice at trilifon.com. I'll be happy to respond to you. You can also go on the website to the newsletter section do a search on geographic freedom and travel hacking. There's some information there, but I think this particular conversation will give you enough that you can start thinking about it. And then if you want to get real nerdy with it, reach out to me and we'll have a conversation. All right, peace. Can you give us the concept <laughs> of travel hacking and how you use it, you know, to amplify your life. Yeah. Amplify my life is, is the right phrase. I have been able to, for my own life and for other people who have kind of tapped into my thought process about it and come with me and stuff like that, plug into planet and life as intended. That's not an easy concept to absorb in a quick conversation. But when I tell you that I've experienced stuff around the world, I go to places that people couldn't even fathom. Right. And have built relationships with people that I could never have fathomed. 
And a lot of it has come from travel hacking. And the way that I define travel hacking is traveling in the most amount of comfort for the least amount of money. I'm not talking about scarcity, brother. I know where damn near most showers are in lounges across the world and stuff like that. Because when I travel, I want to know that I'm in max comfort. It's really an art form. It's not like you're going to read a book and all of a sudden become a travel hacker. It Over time, I've gotten so good at it. My basic framework is I got a business life and a personal life. My business life is funneled through one United Airlines card. My personal life is funneled through one United Airlines card. You should be loyal to the airline that has a hub in your city mm. or be loyal to the airline that goes to places you want to go. So for me, I'm technically based Washington, D.C. That's dull, that's uh, United Airlines. And I'm always in Europe and the Mideast. So that's wonderful for me because United Airlines is part of the Star Alliance family. We've tons of, a ton of airlines that go to the Mideast and Europe. So I can pretty much get anywhere in the world within eight hours, right? So I funnel my life through United. I'm a member of all these clubs, et cetera, et cetera. I know that if I'm in the Frankfurt airport and I get off of a United plane, I can go to the uh, Air Canada Maple Lounge because they will honor a particular status that I have or something like that. But I also know how to get tickets for free. I'm usually generating one or two business class tickets every four to six weeks or so because I do spend a lot of money on a business level or what have you. But when I didn't have money or when I wasn't doing this amount of business, what I was doing was like when I went to the Finland five times in a year, I bought tickets to Finland on the cheap through orbits like seven months in advance. The reason why I did it is because I knew if I didn't use it, I could just use it as a credit on the next one anyway. Mm. So what I did was I would challenge my, okay, I got to Finland. I got to Helsinki this time for 700 bucks round trip. I'm going to challenge myself to get there for 600 bucks the next time. And I mm. just got good at it. Good at it so much that it would be a Wednesday or a Thursday in D.C. And I'd be like, yeah, I'm going to get on a plane tonight. I'm going to go to Turkey and I'm going to read a book for a couple of days. I'm going to come back. It just opened the world. Like the way we run down and go to Dave and Buster's to go play games. I'll roll out to Frankfurt for the weekend to get a, a dinner, which may seem like, man, that's extraordinary shit. But it's only extraordinary because people don't do it. Mm -hmm. This is where the whole concept of try life on comes in that I've been talking to you guys about. It just takes practice. I'm so good at it at this point. It's not extraordinary to me to just pop up, let's say, in Beirut and go hang out with, with some people that I know at 16 millimeter bar in, in the Jamesa neighborhood. I know them. It's so easy for me. And that came from a love of the world and wanting to experience things and build relationships with people. And the skill set that I developed over time was travel hacking, which makes the world smaller. So you can go from here to Arlington, like my man, that's 30 minutes. That seems normal to people. But for me, it's very normal to get on a plane and roll out to London for a night. Travel hacking. It just makes the world smaller. So to come here, to come see you guys for the day, I'm like, yeah, no problem. So I kind of want to go deeper into the travel hacking, right? Yeah. How does that experience of the world change your outlook on things? And how does it <clears throat> make you appreciate life more? Oh, my God, brother. I, 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 I wish on people they could have the experiences and emotion of human interaction that I have had. Black folk, brown folk, yellow folk, white folk, red folk, blue folk, the native Swami people of Arctic Finland. Y'all know about them? Never heard I of them a day in my life. I do, and I've sat down with them quite a bit. Because they've had the same trials and tribulations that Native Americans have here, but no one knows about them. Mm -hmm. So when I read a book about them, it's like, what is this? I don't know nothing about this. And every time I find out something around the world that I really am interested in, I don't wait. I go. That's how it's changed me, man, because there's so much out there to experience. And when all of us was growing up, everything that everybody told me was, 
all you got to do to be happy in life is have sim- get symbols of wealth, right? Like get the Mercedes, get the sneakers, get the get the beepers at the time at the time like that. I'm aging myself. We used to get beepers and shit like that. It was never that actually. It was actually human interaction and learning about shit that we know absolute I know Boston, DC and New York. I'm not going to learn something new right now. But I am going to cer- learn something new if I go I I want to get up to Oslo, Norway because I've never been there. I want to experience life. And the more that I get out there, and it all started when I was 15 years old. I went to, my dad sent me to Paris, France to stay with a family that had stayed with me the previous summer. I'm a French Like speaker. an exchange student? Yeah, exchange of- student. His dad did the best thing for me that could have ever happened. And, I, and I'm and i so humbled and grateful by uh, for this man. He took me and his son and he rode us around France for 30 days in an old 83 stick shift Range Rover. This is in 1990. I'm just a knucklehead kid from Boston at this point. All right. It changed me. French funerals, French castles, French wine, French wedding, French girls, French weed, French booze, French everything, French food. And I got back from that trip and I was like. Uh, the world is a lot bigger than Boston, Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. The emotions that I had on that trip, I'm like, I don't know how to do that again, but I need to do that again. That was the first, because I told you there were two events. That, that was the first thing that happened to me when I was young. And then the second thing that happened is I found personal finance for dummies when I was 21. So the first thing, the travel to France was when I was 15. I found the book Personal Finance for Dummies, which led me on this financial journey and real estate and all that when I was 21. Then it clicked. This is what clicked and in answer to your question about travel. I found passive income or the concept of passive income. And it dawned on me, oh, I can actually create revenue without having to be somewhere, which means I can go back to when I was 15 and go travel the world and have all those experiences again. It clicked that I life could be was more than just getting a job, doing the nine to five running the streets of Boston, it clicked. So I've just never stopped traveling, ever, because I want as much experience as possible. And it's not that I want to see every country. That's not the case. It's just, you know, you want to experience everything life has to offer before it's time to punch off this planet. So that's where the the travel comes in, and the travel hacking just enables all that. I am constantly finding ways to do different things with different people and Hey guys, this is Maurice, host of the Try Life On Podcast, and thank you for listening to another episode. I hope you are finding it useful in helping you design your own lifestyle that you don't need a vacation from. If that's the case, please consider dropping a review for me, whether in Apple, iTunes, or in Spotify. Drop a review, put some stars on it, give me some feedback on how I can make the podcast better, what information you are looking for. I am doing my best to get information to you on the Try Life on Principles, the five freedoms, how to build lifestyle, travel hacking, all of it. And I wanna do it for you. So please do a review for me. And until next time, my name is Maurice Philogene and this is the Try Life on Podcast. Peace.